Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast Lean Six Sigma Bursts are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In this podcast, I share the results of an AI tool called Notebook LM, which is something that Google created. I was inspired by what the Lean Enterprise Institute put together, plus um, a podcast from Mark Graben, where they uploaded some files to the system. And then what it would do is create summary documents and lots of different information from these files. And so I think Mark uploaded his book in a PDF format. That gave me the idea to upload uh, a recent webinar I did on energy treasure hunts. And so I wanted to hear what it came up with a summary. But the other interesting feature it has is it creates a podcast of two people talking about whatever documents or files you upload. So what you're going to hear is the conversation between two AI characters based on these uh, this webinar that was presented. So I thought it was really fascinating to hear them create a conversation in a podcast format. So I cut it down a little bit, but you'll get the gist of it. It's pretty strange. It sounds like two regular normal people speaking. So the technology is getting really, really good. So check it out and let me know what you think. And then I'll also link to the actual webinar if you want to check that out as well. All right. So today we're diving into something I think is really cool. Okay. Energy treasure hunts. Uh-huh. Have you heard of these? I have. So you know how sometimes you just feel like there's wasted energy all around? Like right. Just everywhere you look, you're like, oh, why is that light on? Yep. Why is that thing running? Yeah. This is like a fun and engaging way to find those hidden savings. That's right. And make like a real impact. Yeah. And the cool thing is it doesn't have to involve any big investments or fancy technology. Yeah, absolutely right. It's no. more about just being more aware of what's going on. Yeah. So walk me through this. What exactly is an energy treasure hunt? So it's kind of like a focused event, oh, Okay. usually two to three days long, where teams get together and really walk through their facility and observe everything that's going on mm. with the goal of identifying and measuring any energy that's being wasted. Okay. So it's like a detective investigation, exactly. but yeah. for energy efficiency. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so this whole concept is actually pretty fascinating. It originated with Toyota back in the late 90s. Wow. They realized that getting their employees involved in these types of events led to the success of their program. Right. So it's not just about the technology or the whatever you're using to measure. It's about getting people engaged and invested in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. And, you know, the impact of these treasure hunts has been so significant that the U.S. Department of Energy's Better Plants program actually encourages these events. Wow. They've seen that it ties to really successful energy programs overall. Okay, I like this. So let's break down how this treasure hunt actually works. So What's like the typical approach? So usually what we like to do is we like to start the treasure hunt, if possible, on a weekend. Oh, really? Like a Sunday. Interesting. You know, when things are typically quieter. Oh, okay. That's a good time to walk through a facility. When there's not a lot of activity. Exactly. And use your senses to kind of pick up on anything that might seem off. Like if you see lights on in empty rooms or machines humming away when they shouldn't be. Mm. You know, those are the clues that we're looking for. Right. You can really, I can see how just having that shift in perspective when you're not caught up in the daily rush and all the activity. Yeah. You start to notice things that you would just normally tune out. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just the first step. Yeah. On Monday and Tuesday, we shift gears and we start actually quantifying all those observations that we made. Got it. So Sunday, you're using your eyes and your ears. Mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, you're bringing in the data to back it up. That's exactly right. So what are some of the tools or software that you might use for that analysis? So one of the most powerful tools that we use is the Department of Energy's Measure software. Okay. And this is a software that's designed to be really Mm user-friendly. Anyone can use it. Right. And what it allows teams to do is to input the information that they gather during their observations, and then it calculates potential savings Oh wow! from addressing each source of waste. So you're not just saying, hey, this light is on when it shouldn't be. Right. You're actually able to put a number on how much energy and money is being wasted. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. And that actually makes a huge difference when it comes to prioritizing actions. Of course. And getting buy-in from the decision makers. Yeah, I can imagine. It's one thing to say, hey, we can save energy by doing this, 
But if you can say, we can save X amount of dollars, right. that's really impactful. It carries a lot more weight. Exactly. Okay, so you've got your teams, right. you've got your software, and you're ready to crunch some numbers. That's right. So you're really piecing together a puzzle yeah. with all these different data points to create a complete picture of the facility's energy use. That's a great way to put it, yeah. Yeah. And you know what's really fascinating is how much insight you can gain from doing that. Yeah. For example, I remember reading about a pilot project that was done in a circuit board shop. Okay. And they uncovered a potential $60,000 in savings. Wow. Just by carefully analyzing their energy use. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, it really shows that even facilities that you know, appear to be well managed, could have these hidden opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Let me pause for a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Creative Safety Supply. Creative Safety Supply is a great resource for free guides, infographics, and continuous improvement tools. I recommend starting with their 5S guide. It includes breakdowns of the five pillars, ways to begin implementing 5S, and even organization tips and color charts. From red tags to floor markings, it's all there. Download it for free at creativesafetysupply.com slash 5S. But there's another element here that's crucial, and that's baseload energy. Oh, okay, tell me about that. So that's the energy that a facility is using even when it appears to be idle. So even when everything seems quiet. Right. There might be equipment running in the background. Exactly. That's quietly draining energy. Yeah, and, you know, analyzing the baseload can reveal equipment that's left on unnecessarily okay during you know off hours At evenings weekends things like that exactly oh wow and that can really add up to a lot of wasted energy i know i can't help but think about how often i've walked into you know an office on a weekend and just felt the ac blasting away and no, i'm right. like why exactly why is it so cold in here yeah like how much energy are we wasting across the country just doing that and speaking of surprising energy wasters did you know that even a tiny compressed air leak, uh -huh. just an eighth of an inch in diameter, okay. can cost a facility over $2,100 a year? Really? Yeah. That's crazy. It is. And compressed air systems are one of those things that are often overlooked. But those seemingly minor leaks can add up to a lot of money. I'm curious, how do you keep this momentum going Like once the initial treasure hunt's over? So one way that we've seen a lot of success is through the Better Buildings Challenge Swaps. Okay, tell me about these swaps. So these swaps involve teams from different organizations exchanging visits to their facilities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone who's not familiar with your facility might spot things that you've simply become blind to over time. Yeah, right. Yeah, I can see that. Right? It's like having an outsider come in and be like, hey, have you ever thought about doing it this way? Exactly. But I think there's also something deeper here, too. Yeah, I agree with you. Like there's a sense of empowerment. Absolutely. That comes from taking control of your energy use. Yeah. And realizing you're not just a passive consumer. You yeah. can actually make a difference. Yeah. It's about feeling like you're part of the solution. Right. Not the problem. Right. And, you know, it can kind of inspire other people to do the same thing. Yeah. It's contagious in a good way. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to encourage our listeners to embrace that sense of empowerment yeah. and start thinking about energy efficiency in a new way. That's right. It's not about deprivation mm. or sacrifice. It's about finding, you know, smarter, more sustainable ways to live and work. Absolutely. And, you know, have fun with it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to experiment and Try new things and share what you learn with other people. Okay, so to our listeners, we say get out there, put on your detective hats, Okay. start your own energy treasure hunt. You never know what you might discover, and you'll definitely be making a difference. That's right. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.